Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. Now, this came out in 1987, and this is a sequel to the 1980s slasher film Prom Night. Now, the film was directed by Bruce Pittman, written by Ron Oliver, and once again produced by Peter R. Simpson, who also produced the first movie. Now, originally this was a standalone script that I think Peter R. Simpson bought the rights to, and he decided to make it a sequel to Prom Night, but even then, the only real connection that this has with the first movie is it's supposed to be the same high school, at least they're both called Hamilton. Hamilton High, yet both films are clearly shot at two different schools. But if you can ignore that they're clearly two different buildings and just go with it and accept that, okay, this is the same school, that is one way where you could connect this to the first movie by suggesting that it's the same school just set years later and following a completely different group of characters and a completely different scenario. But in reality, this is an in-name only sequel, and whereas the first movie was a slasher film, this movie, while having slasher movie elements, is really more of a ghost story and a demonic possession movie, and it owes a lot more to movies like The Exorcist and Carrie and A Nightmare on Elm Street than it does the original Prom Night. Now, I rewatched both this and the first movie in the past two weeks, and it had been years since I've seen either of them, and if you saw my review on the first Prom Night movie, I mentioned in that review that the film wasn't really as good as I remembered it being. This movie, on the other hand, while I liked it when I first saw the movie, this was actually better than I remembered it being. And I can honestly say that this is a better film than the first Prom Night movie. It's a significantly more well-made film, it's a more imaginative film, and I really liked this movie a lot, and I'm gonna say it, I think this is the best film in the entire Prom Night franchise. Now, what the plot of Hello, Mary Lou is it begins in 1957, and we follow this high school student named Billy Nordham, who's taken his girlfriend, Mary Lou Maloney, to the high school prom, and he discovers that she's cheating on him, and when he confronts her about this, she humiliates him in front of everybody. So, he decides to play a prank on her, as she's being crowned queen of the prom, his plan is to drop a stink bomb onto the stage, but something goes horribly wrong when the fuse causes her dress to catch on fire and she burns to death. So then we jump ahead to 30 years later, Billy is now the principal of the high school, and I guess nobody figured out that he was the one behind Mary Lou's death, because even though it was an accident, for some reason I kind of doubt that he would actually be able to become principal of the school if people knew that he was actually responsible for her death, but... Basically, he's the school's principal now, and what happens is the ghost of Mary Lou comes back and takes possession of his son's girlfriend, a girl named Vicky. So now, under the guise of Vicky, Mary Lou is determined to be crowned prom queen, and she'll kill anybody who gets in her way. In the film, Michael Ironside plays the adult Billy, and he of course is great in the movie, but Michael Ironside is a great actor. And he's one of those actors who, even when he's in crap, he usually gives it his all. And Billy is an interesting character because everything that's happening in the movie is technically his fault. At the same time, he is shown to be a loving father, and he is shown to feel tremendous guilt over what happened to Mary Lou. And I actually wish the film would have focused a little bit more on him and Mary Lou going after him, rather than Mary Lou trying to become the prom queen. Now, in the film, Mary Lou Maloney is technically played by two different actresses. She's played by Lisa Schrag, if I'm saying her name right, who plays the quote-unquote real Mary Lou, who really only shows up in the beginning of the film when Mary Lou is a human, and then she shows up towards the end of the film. But throughout most of the film, Mary Lou is possessing the character of Vicky Carpenter played by Wendy Leon. Now, you could kind of tell that they were trying to make Mary Lou sort of the female Freddy Krueger, especially
especially with her lame puns and one-liners. But you know what? Lisa Schrage sells it, and... And there is something kind of sad and tragic about Mary Lou. I mean, yes, when she was alive, she was a douchebag. I mean, she was cheating on her boyfriend, which is a shitty thing to do to somebody, and it seems like she was a very emotionally manipulative person, but she didn't deserve to die because of it. And who knows, maybe she would have outgrown that behavior as she got older, but because her life was cut short, she never got a chance to mature. Wendy Leon is also really good as the possessed Vicky, but the actress also does a really good job playing Vicky when she's not possessed as this really sweet and shy person. And in the film, Vicky is ostensibly the main character of the movie, and I like how there is sort of a build-up to her getting possessed, where before she gets possessed by Mary Lou, she's being haunted by the spirit of Mary Lou in her nightmares. And you start to see her psychologically become a different person even before the full possession happens. Hmm. Vicky Carpenter. I wonder if her last name is a reference to anybody. Now, the movie actually has a pretty interesting cast of characters. Probably my favorite character in the film, at least until a certain point, is the character of Josh, who's actually played by Brock Simpson, who played the young Nick in the first prom night. And Josh, for the most part, is a very likable and funny character. However, there is a scene involving him towards the end of the movie that, I hate to say it, especially because this word gets way overused, but at least looking at it today, is a little problematic. Now, in the film, there's a character named Kelly who is a real bitch throughout most of the movie, and much like Mary Lou, she's determined to become prom queen as well, and Josh is the one controlling the computer votes on who gets to be prom queen, and there's a certain point where Kelly tries to bribe him into making sure that she becomes prom queen, and he refuses for the most part, but then he names his price. And basically, his price is give him a blowjob, which she does. Now, granted, it's not exactly unwilling when she does it, and she does kind of offer it. At the same time, though, afterwards, she looks so visibly uncomfortable that it makes the scene it makes the scene a little uncomfortable in ways that I don't think the filmmakers actually intended. Because I think the filmmakers want us to really like the character of Josh because I really liked this character at least up until this point and again it's not like it's unconsensual but it's how uncomfortable she looks afterwards that again not to sound like a broken record kind of makes the scene a little problematic look at it by today's standards. Now as I mentioned before this movie does owe a lot to the exorcist in fact the character of Josh outright references the exorcist Exist twice in this movie. Also in the movie, you have the character of Father Cooper, who was actually the guy that Mary Lou was cheating on Billy with, who ended up becoming a priest after Mary Lou died. And he's the first person besides Vicky to figure out that Mary Lou has come back. But in this, you sort of get a subversion or a reverse on the whole exorcist trope, whereas in The Exorcist, it was God and the character's faith in God that defeated the evil in that movie, whereas in this movie, God and Father Cooper's faith don't do shit. In fact, at a certain point, Mary Lou outright tells Father Cooper that there is no God and there is no heaven. Now, granted, this could just be her fucking with him, but what if she's right? What if there is an afterlife, but what if when we die, we all go to the same place, and what if it sucks? But that also depends on how you want to interpret it. And the movie has some surprisingly creepy and surreal imagery in it, like Vicky's visions of hell or whatever ghostly realm Mary Lou is from. Those scenes are actually really creepy and off-putting. And then you have this demon-possessed rocking horse with blood-red eyes and its mouth moves around, and it's really freaking creepy. There's also a scene where Vicky, who is fully possessed 
possessed by Mary Lou at this point, seduces her own father. Now, this could be Mary Lou using her supernatural influence to influence her father to kiss her back, but there's also sort of the implication that perhaps Vicky's father already kind of had these desires to begin with, and Mary Lou just woke these desires up. So, while the film, for the most part, is relatively campy, there are also some pretty creepy and off-putting scenes in this film. The movie also has a lot of meta-humor, like the character of Vicki Carpenter. Obviously, her last name is a reference to John Carpenter. There's a teacher in here named Mr. Craven. There's actually a character in this movie named Eddie Wood. There's a character named Mr. King. The character of Kelly's last name is Hedenlauder, an obvious reference to Frank Hedenlauder. There's also some surprisingly believable teen drama in this movie. Like, in the film, there's this character named Jess, who is actually Mary Lou's first victim, but there's a scene where you find out that she's pregnant, and when she's telling Vicky about this, and she's crying about how the guy who got her pregnant just left her and won't return her phone calls, like, it's actually surprisingly heavy shit for what, for the most part, is a cheesy late 80s horror film. And then when she dies, everybody assumes that it's a suicide. But yeah, I recommend Hello, Mary Lou! Prom Night 2. I think it's the best film in the Prom Night franchise, and on its own, it's a very underrated horror film. Now, even though the Prom Night series is, for the most part, an anthology series where each film is its own story, Mary Lou Maloney actually would show up in the next film, Prom Night 3, The Last Kiss, which is kind of a direct sequel to this, but is more so a comedic remake of this. And that's gonna be my next movie review, but until next time, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but this makes sense if you've seen the movie. See you later, alligator.